All right, I'm back for video number two today, and this one's gonna be about difference. So this one can get a lot of people heated, but again, it is what it is. So when it comes to difference, I'm not gonna say we're all the same. We're not all the same. It's pretty. It's pretty obvious. If you have, if you have anybody standing beside me, we're not gonna look the same. We're obviously different. Pretty simple. It doesn't matter. Well, color doesn't matter. I'll, I'll get into that. But I mean. It doesn't matter if we're the same color, different color, like if it's my brother, we're still going to look different, you know? So at the end of the day, difference is one of the most important things on the planet. You don't treat grass the same as you treat, like, a, like a, uh, what do you call it, uh, a tree. Like if you mow grass, you're not going to mow a tree. Like there's just certain things, every, things could be similar, but they're not, they're not the same. So understanding difference is probably the most important thing on the planet. And it's the most overlooked thing, right? So understanding how everything is different will give you the key to treating everything in its proper respect. So here's one example. I, 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 for people that know me, I walked into a bear a couple weeks ago. It was probably as far as the camera is to me right now, right? Me kind of understanding how a bear acts, I was able to treat it in a certain type of way and walk away from it completely unscathed. Honestly, I wasn't even thinking about it hurting me in that type of way, but at the end of the day, it's a bear, it can do a lot. The way I treated it, it's gonna be very different about how I treat my dog, you know what I mean? Understanding that difference is completely important. A lot of people, since they don't understand how things are different, a lot of people have been mauled by bears in the last two weeks in the same spots in my city. Why? Probably because they didn't know how to treat the animal, right? So understanding difference is important not for not for essentially blaming something else which again i talked about in other videos but so you can take accountability for what comes out of you so your judgment isn't improper so that whatever is in front of you can treat you with the proper respect so when it comes down to people which is what i'm going to get into for difference to make this a lot easier to understand so within so-called black people within Again, I'm just going to use black people as a generic term because it's what everybody understands for now. But as people catch on to more and more the what black means, what it relates to bleak and bleached and so on, and we're not obviously bleached, we're full of color, life, and all these things, people will understand. I'm not going to call this white, though, to mean whole, because at this point it's going to sound ridiculous. So, the so-called black people, right? We're all, we're all different. Everybody, I feel... A lot of things with African Americans are gonna, they, they jump from thing to thing from thing. And they were every single thing that suits them and I understand the culture was ripped from them. So at the end of the day, they're gonna have to really find what they, they were and really understand every single level of that. So it's like one day it could be Egyptian, one day you're a Washita Moor, whatever sounds the best at that moment, you know? Whatever sounds like a samurai, whatever, whatever sounds best. And to be fair, we have, as black people, we have done a lot of things on this planet, but some of us have done other things. Some of us have done other things, you know what I mean? Now, at one point, we were all together. You can see this in so-called Egypt. You can see that there was one civilization. There's the most pyramids in the world are in China, and you have a Sphinx in Kentucky. You can Google Sphinx in Kentucky and look at it. Pyramids in Grand Canyon. Um, Ankh, or Isis temple in America. You can find all this stuff in the Americas. People say the Americas is the first Egypt. That's a whole other topic. All these things are other topics, but at the end of the day, and there were two Egypts, but at the end of the day, in so-called Egypt, you can see on the walls you had the very dark Africans, people more of my color, people similar to my color, but not quite the same as me, and people that were quite a little bit lighter, right? Now, at this place, there was a ton of people all living together, not, maybe not Neanderthals or, or more modern Europeans that we have now, but as black, so-called black people, we were all living together, and you can see all the different gods that were there, and it was because we all understood the differences that we all had and how we portrayed ourselves at our highest caliber. But we had respect for each other. Like, you might see a pygmy god being best, being the short dwarf-like god, right? Or you might see, um, like, Nubian gods. You might see just all these different types of gods, right? And at a certain point, we collect, we collectively put it all together, right? Now we got mixing at this point. 
in that place we had mixing of different peoples. So a lot of people want to disregard the Bible, but there was always three kids. There was Cain and Abel, and then Seth, which a lot of people don't even know about Seth, because after Cain killed Abel, they had a third son to substitute Cain, Seth. But in the whole Noah story, there were three kids, which were in different order at this point. We had Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Was Ham the oldest? Was Shem the oldest? Japheth was definitely the youngest, but other than that, that's not important. But still, understanding the difference between us within black people is important too. So when you look at, for example, and a lot of people will have facts, they'll say things like, oh, these people were created, this people were created. So one day it's like Africans could be brothers with you, one day we could be created, one day we could be this, one day we could be that. It's whatever suits the purpose, but at the end of the day, hold that same energy when the truth comes out, because chances are you might not be right, <laughs> but just remember that you could be right, you could be wrong, but really hold that judgment aside. So when you see people like, Let's see if I can get this to focus, the Khoisan people or the Bushmen people, which clearly brought out the Asian races. See, when you have tribes, the word tribe meaning tri, that means three, three sons, right? So when you have a tribe of people and they all look the same, the group of people that have a lot of mixed people probably didn't create a group of people that all look the same. The people that all look the same probably mixed with another group of people that all look the same to create people that can create uh, multiple versions of both things, you know, or they're a mixture of them. So parenting is important to understand the order of operations, but either way, that's another topic. But when you see these people, you can clearly see that they're the progenitors of the Asians, right? and other possible Asiatic races. So this is important to understand because we have three different types of melanin as well. So you can tell that each of these groups are gonna have three different types of melanin. So when you see the, the people of Japheth in the Bible, Japheth or whatever, uh, well, however you wanna pronounce it, these clearly were the people that they're talking about in that. So then when you talk about the people of Shem, I'm gonna use Ethiopian people as an example. Some of us have hemetic DNA, with, but, for the most part. You can see our features. I could use meat as, as an example too. Our lips, our nose, our ears, they're different than um, uh, a lot of the uh, so-called uh, black features that we know of, right? Or for me as an example. You can see by my lips, my nose, my ears, they're gonna be quite different than most uh, other uh, so-called black people's features, right? So. There's other Shemitic people, but I'm just using Ethiopian people as an example. Now we got Sudanese, which is a good example of the Hemetic people. So you can see, so basically Hemetic being, which is, this is not a bad thing at all, but you can see the way they grow their hair. Their hair doesn't quite grow the same as like Shemitic people, right? Like as a, for Shemitic people, our hair might grow like really fast and longer, right? That's for other reasons. They might have, their body has certain physiological reasons why their hair grows shorter, not being a bad thing at all. It actually could be even better, you know? It could be worse, could be better, but in relative to you, it doesn't really matter. For that person though, it's probably better because hair is to contain energy. So what if they have too much energy that they can't contain it? So it burns all out that hair. When you look at their arms and you look at a lot of their features, they don't have any hair on it at all. Absolutely zero hair. There's a reason for all of that. The melanin pulls it in, but like I said, there's three types of melanin. There's the reddish yellow melanin. The, uh, there's the reddish yellow melanin. So if you have more of the red melanin, it turns to be more yellow or blonde. Um, you can see this pretty easily in white people because they'll have like ginger people, blonde people, brown hair, black hair. So red, yellow melanin, the more of the red melanin you have, it becomes yellow. Then there's brown melanin and then there's black melanin, which they have their scientific terms like full melanin, you melanin, and so on. But I'm just making it simple for everybody. So these people might have, like um, the people of Ham might have more of the black melanin, but less of the yellow melanin. We have all three either way, no matter what, if you're so-called black. But the uh, but there is the, the difference. So we labeled the difference so we can understand each other in relativeness to each other. So. 
when you're more like purple black or very dark dark black you might have more of the black melanin right and less of the yellow melanin when you're schematic you might have uh, more of the yellow and the brown less of the black but we still have all three all three of us have all three when you're part of the like the asian um ancestors like the Bushman people and the Khoisan people they might have more of the yellow and the black they might have less of the brown they might have yellow more you, you see how these things can play out so it's different right now when you look at races around the whole world and here's another I'm gonna take another step back before I even get into that so now you can look at difference in a few different ways you have your physiological differences which will include your DNA your melanin is going to be an expression of that, but your DNA, your blood, everything that's within your body, right? And on your body. Now, you might have differences within the souls, differences like within our souls, every individual soul, right? Then you might have differences within the spirit, which is where kind of the grouping of the souls came from, right? So that might have to do with your DNA and ancestral bloodlines and a lot of these type of things, right? So when that comes into play, I'm not going to really go more. Into, I'm not going to really go too much into the soul and the spiritual differences between people. You could see a lot of that between cultures, between religions, and how um, people what what gets expressed out of a person. But for the most part, when you understand the physiological, the body differences between everybody, you can. Since you'll understand that, you'll be able to decipher yourself a person's how like the difference between everybody's souls and spirits for the most part just by understanding the last filter being their body and how that part gets expressed because if you saw my old my, one of my older videos explaining how spirit more relates to being like a flat line like if you see a heart rate monitor and you see something flatlining someone flatlining that relates more to the spirit then when it's actually vibrating it becomes more of the soul it's the expression of the spirit uh, living in that in that human vessel and then the actual energy that comes out of it relates more to, to relates more to the body right so when you understand the body aspect of it you can use your own mind backtrace how the soul and the spirit are coming through that right so with the physiological differences blood differences that will come after the physio well, that will come after the understanding the differences in melanin so the reason I explained elements in, the old, in one of the old videos, which you should probably watch before this as well, it's important to understand elements. And again, I'll make more videos explaining each element more specifically, but someone who has more of the, someone more of the hermetic side might have more water energy, if you want to call it that. Water being receptive, water being um, darker, water being able to hold more in, right? Someone, people, the shemetic, might have more of the fire, and this is why Shem relates to actually fire. When he, when it's, when the word uh, Ethiopian in the Greek or whatever, and then Shem, all these type of words relate to fiery or fiery eyes or piercing eyes, right? That has a lot to do with our DNA. Not necessarily like when you have fire and you burn something and it turns black, not necessarily that. Now, when you have um, the Khoisan or Bushmen people, that would relate more to air energy. You can see this in the different lifestyles people live. Our, a lot of our tribal people are, we're the old, like a, not just Ethiopian specifically, but it could be like Kenyans, Ugandan, people around our area who are also of Shemitic origin as well. They could, a lot of us, especially our people, but ma the Masuri people, a lot of these tribes, they originated cattle farming cattle farming and certain techniques that they did. This is because of what their body dietary needs are because of the melanin they have. So depending on what, how much melanin and what types of melanin you have, you're going to require different things from nature. So at that point, you're going to express different expressions out of your body to go get those other different things. So if we're doing more cattle farming and doing certain types of farming and certain types of things, we're looking for one type of thing. Now, if you see Bushman people and they're more nomadic they're more like uh literally like air where they can just travel and be anywhere and uh not like really reshape things they just kind of live off whatever they that that's more like air water is more receptive and uh it, it's more fluent it requires there's a lot more uh for example like emotion into it 
their eyes might be completely different when you look into that person's eyes. It might be like you can look into their eyes for a long time because it can like pull energy out of you. For someone of my culture, especially because our culture is disrespectful to look at other people like that are older in their eyes, we have a certain type of eye contact. We can be piercing through people. So for the most part, you might see my eyes shift a lot, but it's because it's because of this nature that we have. Because if I stare for too long, it might be way too piercing when I, the way the way we we'll look at the way we look at people. So understanding a lot of these differences will explain a lot of things about how you need to act in the world, right? So within our own people, we're gonna have um, a lot of different uh, a lot of different natures. So if you're looking at African Americans, which again, you could just completely disregard the fact that a lot of slaves were brought there. And a lot of them died, most of them died, but you could research this. At, at 388,000 only made it to the Americas. Out of that 388,000, you know how quickly black people reproduce. We can easily reproduce to create millions of people so quickly within a few generations. It's very simple. We, we can have so many kids. So a lot of people did come from Africa, and that there, were, there was a lot of people in the Americas. Now, where did those people, what kind of DNA, what kind of people are those people in the Americas? You can kind of look at old photos and you can see that they're going to have a different DNA. But where that lies, that's not really the topic of this video, but where that lies, you'll be able to see that they had a more of the darker hermetic kind of skin, but they had a lot of schematic features with the hair being straight, the nose is the lips. So that's more Ham and Shem, which in the Bible we say Hashem in the Hebrew Bible, the modern Hebrew Bible, Hashem, which is Israelites, but then the ones that came from Africa, 388,000 of them that made it and had a lot of kids, that would be, again, Hashem, but either way, it's not really about that. So you can see though they have the qualities of Ham and Shem, which gives you a lot of, uh, gives you a lot of, uh, it, give, it gives you the DNA of two different cultures more than just uh, necessarily one, you know? When you're more pure to a certain one thing, it's more uh, easy to understand what you are. Now, if, but when you have more of something, it's, uh, you have more to work with, you know? So there, there's a lot of differences in that and understanding it is gonna help you further yourself anyways, without guessing, you know? But when it comes to other races, now when you, if you categorize all people that are darker as black people, right, so-called black people, and then categorize like Asians, whites, Middle Eastern, you can just look at it as generally black people have the most melanin, so we're gonna all be, to them, we're gonna be like water to them. And then the most white person is gonna be more like fire. Now if you look at fire, when you like light a lighter, it can be there and it's gone. You put a container on it, it loses air, it's gonna completely disappear. Fire doesn't really internalize anything. There's a, and Dolo the Pilot Man explains a lot of this very uh, well on his elemental videos, which I made playlists of. Um, fire and water have a yin and yang. Earth and air have a yin and yang, right? But then there's a yin and yang between all of it. Like there's uh, one between water and air, or yeah, water and air, one between fire and earth, one between fire and water, one between earth and air. That's a whole other topic, but between fire and water. They're both right-brained, so they're both going to be explaining things from the, the right brain being more the feelings and the emotional side of things, right? Water's going to internalize, water's going to express, or fire's going to express it. So water's going to be the emotion, fire's going to be the feelings. When you have a feeling, a feeling can come and go, right? But when you're emotional about something, for the most part, you're going to contain that feeling and hold it in. So water will be more the internalized feelings of things. Fire will be more the releasing of it, right? So that becomes emotion and feelings, right? Water, water being emotion, fire being feeling. So when you look at black people as a whole, we're going to be more of the um, emotional type in relation to, 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 to just white people as a whole. Now, white people are going to be more of the feeling. Whatever they feel, they're going to run with it real quick. They're not going to really internalize things the way they are. They're going to just really, like if you fuck with them in any type of way, they're going to just pop off pretty quickly, right? Now, when I said Ethiopians, for example, are shemetic, right? 
which means fire. This is kind of how we could, we, we could kind of seem similar to um, th those people in a certain type of way, because for example, Ethiopia, we've never been colonized. We had a lot of, um, <laughs> we had a lot of tactics to outsmart them, to, uh, we, like we sold, we sold them certain things to buy their guns, and tricked, we tricked the people we were fighting to took their guns. We had the high lines of, there was a lot of tactics we had. That was a whole other topic, but we pop off really quickly, so we didn't really internalize anything, and we, a lot of us died, tons of us died, but we, we were able to fight our way out of things because we were not going to be contained like fire, right? So understanding these differences will even help you in the future understand how you can react to certain things to deal with certain things. If you have a lot of this water quality, that means you're going to have a lot more of this uh, emotional soul quality, right? That soul quality, a lot of people aren't going to understand that. And then if you're Ham and Shem, you're going to be able to have a lot of soul and be expressive of a lot of that soul, right? But if you're containing a lot of things that a, per, a group of people that never contain anything, like if someone abuses you and you're able to contain a lot of it because you're expecting like the other person to have a certain type of solar capacity to understand what you're going through, well, they're, they're not going to understand that. What they're going to understand is more of combat and certain types of things and not being contained. They're going to think that you taking it in is a uh, is an ability for them to give off more like there's the way the way people look at things are a lot of times going to be based off of their physical capacity right now us as black people in general you can tell we're more of this water quality because when we're outside we can or anywhere really we pull in we have a magnetic principle of pulling in everything with our melanin right when we're outside with the sun it's going to be able to pull in a lot of uh we're going to be able to pull in a lot of that heat Right, that that's a positive. That opposites attract water pulling in the the heat of the sun. Right now, understanding a lot of these differences again is going to be important to understand nature. When you have a wolf and a dog, completely different. Yes, they came from similar places, but you're not going to treat a wolf and a dog the same at all. The dog has certain um, hybrid qualities of humans and other things within it that give it a certain kind of solar capacity. A wolf is going to be more wild and it's going to be different within its nature. So that comes to play with us as well. There's a lot of these so these so-called other races again are going to have a lot of a lot of them have animal blood. A lot of them have mixing with animals because a lot of the people mixed with animals like <laughs> they had relationships with the animals. This weird shit. I don't has nothing to do with us. It's just weird, very weird, very, very weird shit. So if you have an issue with that, just look it up and have an issue with your own people and what they do and just don't do it. But other than that, <laughs> Greek culture, they, you can see all the architect. <laughs> I've never seen so many artifacts in my life that promote homosexuality and bestiality and so much weird shit. And you can see that in culture today. Like schools are now pushing all this we, these weird agendas. They had a lot of manipulative tactics to make you believe that uh, they're like you, but at the same time, they're now that you believe you're like them, which you def, like you don't actually believe it. But now that you accept that, um, like as a culture, that we're kind of similar, then they promote all this weird shit about bestiality, trans, like transsexual, all this weird shit, which again could sound like hate speech coming from me, but no, it's just weird because it really serves no purpose. Man and woman serves a purpose of creation, but animal and human serves absolutely no purpose except for f promoting a weird ass fetish. It is what it is. <laughs> Very black and white, like I said. That is what it is. If you call it a preference, preference, that's just a sidestep to dodge the fact that it's just weird shit. Now, it serves no purpose other than pure animalistic lust and trying to sidestep the fact that you're doing sexual relation relations with an animal and then trying to say we came from animals, even though it's a fact that we're not. Uh, that people of black descent, everybody that is black, so-called black, have no caveman DNA, which is, would have been our mixing with animals. It was a lot of excuses to do a lot of the weird behaviors they do. But if you understand what they are, then for the most part, you don't have to excuse, like, they don't have to make excuses for those behaviors. The Greeks did this in ancient times, now they're doing it today. They're of Greek descent, pretty straightforward. Again, this, is, this whole topic can go into many directions. I'm kind of getting sidetracked. It's hard to keep focused on just plainly difference, but 
you can see with all these type of things now understanding some of these differences will show you why some people have certain behaviors why people have these behaviors right and it can make you more proud of the fact that you do not accept these type of things the fact that you are different from these things because then you realize that you're not one one group of people might be tricking you to make you believe that you're worth some you're worth less than you believe you're worth less than you actually are then when you unlock that, you might be able to find that you're way more worthwhile than you ever could have even imagined, right? And that's tapping into your own DNA, tapping into your own self, right? And that's really the number one thing about understanding difference, really just tapping into who you are and not being able to express that. So I think that's really all I want to say about uh, differences. It can go in a lot of different directions. Um, but for the most part, when you understand the differences of different people, you can now manipulatively, and not in a negative manipulation uh, form, manipulating something is just, like if you, if a fruit didn't fall from a tree yet and you picked the fruit and ate it before it fell, you manipulated the life of that. So there could be, a, but you might've needed it at that moment. There's a lot of ways to look at manipulation, right? But now you can, manipulate a situation so that you don't get the short end of the stick because you believe that the other person will reciprocate your nature back, you know? And that is just understanding you, understanding something else. And again, that's like, if I treated that bear like it was a human, if I treated it like it wasn't actually just an animal that was able to do anything, at that moment, I had to do one thing, which was after about 10 minutes of facing this thing off, it went into a bush right there, it stayed there for a few minutes five to 10 minutes, but it kept rustling around. I kept hearing it, it was like basically right here. So what I did is I took a piss to mark my territory because I understand the nature of these animals. Then I went into the water, it was pretty simple. So understanding that made me just walk by it. But a lot of people just want to treat it like it's like you and everything's the same. There's no difference out in the world. And then <laughs> they do weird shit with animals and have relationships with animals and I don't even, that's a, that's a whole, <laughs> that's just a whole like topic that makes pretty much all black people uncomfortable to even think about because again, that's how different we are, right? But yeah, I didn't want that video to get too dark, but it is what it is, you know? So with that, I'll talk about this more in the future in a more um, clear way. Um, as you can see, if you watch the other videos beforehand, it's kind of building up certain understandings to um, get a basic level of certain things I'm talking about. And, you know, a future video might use this kind of understanding of the difference. So you can, uh, you can put this difference video with the accountability video with the judgment video that I, that I just made, right? And then understanding that will make you understand how to have better judgment over situations you're having, you know? So, yeah, with that, hope this helped. Peace.